Hello. Hello, is that Marcia? Yes. Hi, Marcia. It's DJ Gloss from Sound Fusion Radio London. How are you? Good morning. Fantastic. Good, good. Or good afternoon. Well, it's good afternoon where I am, but good morning where you are. So, uh, yeah, that's very nice indeed. How's the weather and whereabouts in the world are you? Oh, this is, it's beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm in uh, Palm Beach, Florida. Ah, it's going to be gorgeous then. (laughs) It's gorgeous. (laughs) <laughs> mm, lovely. Do you know, I, I've never known it to be anything other than gorgeous in Florida. Do you know that? <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> uh, and I've been, I've been a number of times, and it's always gorgeous in Florida. It's, it's like this year-round, pretty much. I think we get two weeks of, oh, it's cold, and that's like 60 degrees or something. <laughs> that's cold? It's warm here in London. <laughs> I know. It's beautiful here. <laughs> uh, amaze me, because when I, when I was in Florida uh, one time, uh, I bumped into a guy who lived there, and he was he was wearing a jumper, and I said to him, it's way too warm to wear a jumper. He said, no, he said, it's cold today. <laughs> I was like, it's cold? You know, we'd wear swimming costume in, in the UK in that temperature, but in Florida, it's cold. <laughs> I'll bet you just wanted to punch him. Like, no, oh my god! Bless, no, I, <laughs> no, I could, uh, I could relate to that totally. You know, <laughs> it, um, it was so, it was such a sweet thing to say, yeah. really. But there you go. Um, you were once labelled as Florida's best kept secret. What do you think of that? It's it was ironic at the time because everyone knew who we were. <laughs> so we so thought this is my thought it, it was just very strange and um but now hindsight i said okay I, I kind of understand why we were very heavily delved into the private sector and the private sector meaning uh private events yes. um where there was a guest list and the guest list was very distinguished and uh contained members of the social elite clubs and, and, you know, just very important people, VIPs in the community. Yes. So so everyone wasn't invited to that party, but that's where I was most of the time. <laughs> sounds sounds and, good to me. Yeah. So it's very easily for the public to say, well, who is that? You know. Mm. Wow. Well, and um, another, I have another description of you. I'm going to read it to you. It's her unique style, vocal tone, and vocal range have captured many audiences around the world. And her band's shows, uh, to say the least, are electrifying. How does that sound, hearing that said about you? Well, um, I'm very modest about what takes place. We just do what we do, and that was a description of what had been experienced. And it, it feels good to see that someone is feeling what you're doing. Yeah. Um, take pride in that. We just, you know, you, you have a lot of situations where, and, you know, I don't mean to um, bash or anything, but you do see a lot of situations where sometimes uh, musicians are, you know, just performing. You know, we're just, we're just into it and we're just doing it and we're going through the motion and, yeah, the crowd is looking at you, but <laughs> but that's about the extent of it. No <laughs> one is getting charged from it, and um, we just take pride in making sure we leave with you. Don't know what the hell just happened to you, and uh, that's what we take pride in. <laughs> that sounds fantastic. That's a that's a lovely description, Marcia. Thank you so much for that. Can I wind the clock back then um, to the very beginnings of things and ask where did it all start? I mean, did it start in upstate New York for you and you moved to Florida or did the music thing start in Florida or was it a bit of both? What what was the thing? All, all of the music started in Florida. Um, we were very young in upstate New York, very young. And all of the music started in Florida and it was not something that I came here to do. I, you know, you don't know your past and... You also, if you were raised by older people that um, were more realist about life, they would tell you to get a real job. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can understand that, yeah. 
Yes, so I I did not come to the music um, initially. It came to me, and you know, you try to run, you try to hide. Well, no, this is not quote unquote a real job, and just to be brought back to it. And um, uh, you know, it just starts wherever you start. You you're someone sees you somewhere at someone's um, I don't know backyard party or a wedding, and it just keeps going from there. But um, we were always taught to turn that talent into a business. You have to hone your craft. You have to become a business person with whatever it is that you've been gifted with, and you will watch your life change. And that's that's how I got here, actually. That sounds absolutely wonderful. So, you know, you've you've moved in your musical career from strength to strength, you know, um, and, and as time's moved on, that, that's been a really clear progression. What what do you think is the driver for you? What's what's driven you uh, it, forwards all the time, you know, in the, with all of those forward movements? I'm a humanitarian by birth. It's yes. in my DNA mm-hmm. set up. And to have quickly learned that what we do is healing is a miracle. Yes. And to understand the power that you have, to be able to harness the power that you have, and to be able to um, minister to people and help people with it is the drive. Uh, the other drive is the fact that <laughs> being a businesswoman, uh, I'm very keen on having real estate. Yes. And having real estate is continuing to produce that music, write that music and build your catalog. And it, it doesn't matter if, if whether someone likes it or not, or even hears it for that matter, you're still building your future. And so those two things just keep me going. <laughs> Sounds great. That's wonderful, Marcia. Thank you. Um, so when you were younger, I mean, what were your musical tastes? What were the bands and, and, and the groups that you were listening to as you grew up? Well, this is going to be very shocking to you. Uh, I'm lucky to be to have some of the knowledge that I have because we were brought up in a very religious home. Right, yeah. And we could not listen to this music. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it, it was taboo. That, uh, and so, yeah. 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 Wow. So it was very difficult to be able to distinguish between um, different artists and genres because you couldn't you just couldn't get a listen to it. But when I could break free, it was um it was everyone. You know, I love all different genres of music. So uh, we heard a lot of the seventies um, classic rock, and, and you just heard it all. Well, well. And, and certainly the music that um, England is holding on to today. You guys have a serious, oh my God, you have a serious thing going on there, say, shall we call it, mm. with saving soul music. So we really appreciate that here in the States. Wonderful. Oh, wow. Hey, that's, um, I guess the next one really comes on from from the questions I've been asking you uh, about your sort of uh, progression and so on. And um, tell us about Marcia Mitchell music and, and what it does and what it means to you. That's just fine. Again, um, learning at a very young age that we needed to turn our talents into a business. Um, that's where it is. I don't necessarily mean uh, running and jumping to become a great recording artist. As you and I know, the business is and has not been what it's all cut out to be. Mm. Uh, Marcia Mitchell Music was formed because of the demand for live performances. And I stress this all the time to independent artists. Um, you have to create your own venue almost. You have to create your own environment, build your shows. And um, if, if they know you're there, if you build it, they will come. So Marcia Mitchell Music uh, was pretty much forced because the people that were following said to me, you, you know, we love your CD, we love your your music, but we're, we don't want to continue to buy it. Of course we will, but where can we see this performance live? Yes. And my God, that changed our, our world completely. 
and uh, being sought after by a, a very um, dignified and wealthy people, mm. it really changed my life. That's 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 amazing. That's lovely, lovely to hear as well. And um, so so the support of of, of live performance because uh, independent artists, you know. The thing with the music industry, I think, at the moment is that um, you know if people are going to make a living at it, it's it's more the live stuff that they that they get paid for than than the, the tunes themselves. It seems nowadays, you know, everybody wants something for nothing, and uh, you know, uh, I, I favour the live environment. You know, even as a DJ, I favour the live environment. Yes. But as a business, and, and Mark D. Mitchell Music, because I did not answer the entire question, is a music entertainment production company uh, here in South Florida, and it is one of the largest and most recognized entertainment production companies, and this music is being provided to just about any type of affair that you can dream up, uh, from, from very exotic weddings uh, to non-exotic weddings to you know, your usual regular wedding, yeah. to a charity gala, to uh, a sporting event. Oh, my God, I, I can concerts. Uh, we do opening acts for uh, very large artists. Mm. We can go on stage, and this conglomerate has the need for very fine, polished entertainers. You're not necessarily a musician, or you're not necessarily a vocalist, there are many different forms of entertainment. Absolutely. And yeah. we thrive to have the best of the best. And, and that is our, um, one of our slogans. That that's, we're coming with the guns. And so, because a lot of people think that, wow, that performance was unbelievable. I feel like I, I bought tickets to a concert. Wonderful. And, but we're sitting in, in a ballroom that maybe holds 200 people. We're at a wedding. We're not at a concert. Mm. So that's our the fame to bring that high level of performance to the smaller venue, smaller event. That's 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 wonderful, and um, you know I can see that being uh, very key. Um, you know, a lot of. Um, Shall I say exotic things like weddings and so on? Florida is a, a real sort of place for that kind of thing, isn't it? And um, you know, bringing quality acts to that kind of environment, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it's a new day now, and believe it or not, the DJ is not excluded. Yes, the bands can play just about everything that a DJ can put on on his turntable, but. We include these guys. We incorporate your talent in with our talent, and that makes it all the more exciting. That so there's great. something for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds wonderful. You know, quite often here in the UK, you know, we DJ alongside bands as well. So, you know, the DJ can bring his angle to an evening. The band can bring their angle to the evening, and it just makes for a more rounded evening, you know, and uh that that always works extremely well. So um, wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Too much fun, yes. Can can I ask you uh, about um, your music specifically? Uh, I I've, um, was going to ask you about some specific songs, if that's okay with you. Oh, I'd love that. Okay, <laughs> I was going to ask you firstly um, about um, Deja Vu, which is uh, for me, it's just beautifully mellow and laid back. Could you could you tell us a little bit more about that one? Thank you. I was a little bit nervous about that. Um, I mean, this is Dionne Warwick, and this is this has been established in the world um, longer than the musicians that played and sang on it. Uh, longer than we've been alive. And you're going to try to reinvent the wheel. It's very scary. Um, definitely, definitely, yep. I, I performed the song many times, and the audience's response was like, oh, my God, whoa. <laughs> you know, who would have thought to, wow. And so my, my camp, um, a lot of, I have a lot of young men around me, um, uh, talented, oh my God, beyond belief. Uh, mm-hmm. They enjoy, we enjoy playing it. Enjoy playing it. I said, Marcia, you have this twist on this song that may appeal to today's industry. Let's do it. Definitely. Yeah. So, I'm thinking, oh my God, okay, we've got to get a mechanical license. We've got to get permission. Oh, we've got to call this person and that person. 
Oh, and it just it's nerve wracking. And to uh, make matters even more interesting, the uh, actual instrumentation during that song was performed uh, live. So Wonderful. we're in the recording studio, and I'm looking at the drummer, the piano, or several pianos, and the bass player. These guys are all in the same session. It's, it was so we wanted to keep it simple and not overdo the song as well. Yes, it was just yeah. No, there's yeah. no overproduction. It's it's just it's just um, you own it in its entirety, even though it's a cover. That was on purpose to leave it like that. Mm, mm. And um, and here we are. It took everyone. It got everyone's attention. It certainly did Ow. that. It <laughs> certainly did that for sure. <laughs> great, great song and, and beautifully produced. Um, um, wonderful. And, and then that brings me on to uh, For Love because that's got a really strong bass line. The, the vocal's awesome on it. Um, reminds me, it's like a a hybrid and I can only describe it as, I, I don't know if you know the bands, but the controllers and, and the song stay and perhaps even a little bit loose ends ish loose ends being a UK band. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, I feel that in that I, tune. I've heard that so many times and um, funny thing, we, we all love loose ends. Um, at the time, I, because that was, you know, a way back, Mm. when their music was um, really at its peak. And, and uh, you know, good music is never going to go away. So their music is good forever for the rest of all of our lives. Um, at the time of my recording, it, I didn't think about loose ends. I just knew that I had to um, take this retro sound and bring it forward. And it's a beautiful song, but you can't lay back on it. It was just completely engaged in that song um i was it was i was brought to the song the song was not brought to me i was brought to the song mm. because of the difficulties in finding someone that could make this their own and in doing so i said well okay well give me the lyrics and i'll read them oh my god these lyrics are this is genius this Very is a strong. genius yeah yeah this lyric yeah. song yeah and um oh boy I, well, and the, I'll hear a little bit of the pilot vocal because obviously you have to know uh, where it can go. And then I couldn't take any more. So I'll be back in 30 minutes and came back to make that song my own. Wonderful. And so that's what you're hearing, um, a little bit of a gospel skill in the background. Uh, at the same time, um, a very light jazzy, smooth jazz, we call it here in the States, mm. um, effect. And uh, the retro, we didn't know what was going to happen. You have to be extremely careful, especially here in the States, in releasing certain material because, you know, it's not acceptable. Mm. <laughs> well, yeah. We didn't care. We didn't care. We just didn't care. Well, I mean, for for the you know, for the UK, I mean, the sound that is on that that retro sound would be extremely it is extremely well received, and um, the timelessness of it. I mean, I I went to see Loose Ends two Fridays ago at the Jazz Cafe in London, so they're they're still around as well. But um, you know, absolutely, just loving wow. the sound on that, and you you know, it's, it's a it's a beautiful tune, and you know, the the also awesome, strong someone vocal. referred to it. That's ninety street soul. Yeah. Is that what? That fits. Huh. That yeah. Yeah, why not? Yeah. That yeah. and that um it's got that feel to it. It's definitely got that retro it, it's I think it's the strong bass line and the use of um some of the synthesizer that's the in The cowbell. There. Yeah, oh that oh, definitely that yeah, without a <laughs> doubt. You can't go wrong with those. Yeah. I mean <laughs> Everyone from Cell Soul Records right the way through to some of the UK Brit funk stuff, cowbells, you've got yes. to have them. <laughs> I, I said, well, don't take them out. Leave them there. It'll we'll probably get some of the attention. So, oh, gosh. But it, I, I'm very proud to um, – that song made the Luxury Soul uh, 2014 compilation CD. It most certainly did. And does. that's a major accomplishment as far as I'm concerned, Um I feel like it's it's a part of the fabric now. Like it may be um, not an anthem. We don't want to go so far, but <laughs> well, at least something's going to be around forever. 
I mean, to to end up on an expansions compilation, it, it's definitely going in the right direction, to say the least. I mean, you know, the the, wow. the luxury soul compilations from expansions are, are very well respected here in the UK. Um, you know, uh, they have a lot of large events that uh, go on here too. And, um, you know, the whole brand is extremely well respected and that is just a wonderful newer piece of retro street soul. Yep. I'll, I'll go there. Wow. Yeah, um, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> um, Prisoner of My Heart. Now, that's upbeat, um, and there's that wonderful beat change in the middle. That, that, that's really good because you're not expecting it. It just sort of it, it kind of stops and does something else for a little while and then comes back. Yeah. I mean, what, what, what's, what's, what's with that? Tell us all about that. I'm a little worried about that. Um, that is a, uh, an effect that you hear in a lot of today's music uh, here in the States. And more or less uh, our our neo-soul type of music. Mm -hmm. It's just not expected. And, oh, my God, I was so worried, just kind of worried. But it um, breaks the song down. You know, the song is driving, and it just kind of slows you down to think. (laughs) Well, I, I wrote one word down on my notes, and the word is nice. (laughs) <laughs> wow! So uh, <laughs> as that section came in um, on my interview notes, I just were, I wrote nice. So there you go. Wow! wow. That. I pen, I penned that song. I, I was very anxious and determined not to um, overload the album. Right now, you guys are experiencing the EP, mm. but the album's coming, and you have to think ahead of yourself. You can't just look at the current project. You have to think ahead. And I said, we can't have every song being a love song or even having the word love in it or even implying that you want to be in love with someone. <laughs> I need to break this up. And um, that song is, is uh, pretty much about a crazy person. And I pinned it in 30 minutes, and here we are. Wow. Um, a person that is totally consumed with their life with with their their dreams and their goals and desires mm. you're consumed with that and that's what prisoner of my heart is about wonderful yeah i i, I can yeah wow thank thank you for sharing that i, I definitely um I, I need to put that in around the interview when we play it because um you know <laughs> people will understand what you're saying for sure yeah without a doubt wow that's great. Yes, but right now you have to be pretty high on the dance floor to even understand portions of it. But I, I knew that the day would come where I would be explaining or describing that song many times over. Mm. But if, you, if you've been consumed with something uh, in your life, then you go back to listen to the song again. All of a sudden, oh, yeah, oh, yes, I know exactly what that means now. Mm. So, yes. Yeah, that's brilliant. I, I was going to um, ask you about The Look of Love, um, another great tune. Um, and, and the lyrics, um, again, uh, did, did you did you put those lyrics together? Are they, is, that, is that a song that you've written personally? No, that song was written by a very accomplished producer in Amsterdam by the name of Roni Morgan. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, Roni Morgan, oh my God... Their, his discography goes beyond my memory right now. Um, many great artists that he's produced uh, mm-hmm. with a team at the, at the time. Um, and uh, he's, he's from the Netherlands. Um, mm-hmm. The chief mm-hmm. songwriter. I, I heard the song and said, hmm. <laughs> wow. Mm-hmm. Um, that one's going to take you left to the left definitely it, it, and that groove I, I knew that y- you would identify with that groove immediately mm-hmm. definitely yeah it, 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 the groove does stand out and uh, you know that coupled with the lyrics and of course the vocal delivery just yes. wonderful just absolutely lovely um, 
And then uh, what do you feel? Which, of course, is like soft, gentle. God, oh, love the sax in that. That just works so beautifully. It's got a very <laughs> dreamy, um, very dreamy around the vocals. So you've got the sax and the vocals. There's kind of... They're kind of hitting off each other there, you know? It's, it's very beautiful. Well, I will tell you this. That saxophone was played by Vincent Broomfield of Audio. Wow. We've been friends for a very long time. Uh, and, of course, you know the Broomfield family and Eugene Wilde and Dee Dee Wilde. Absolutely. Uh, that's a marriage made in heaven. When someone knows your voice, that's it. Mm. Uh, he can hear me singing along with his playing, and it just creates magic. I wrote that song. Uh, the song was uh, composed and produced by two gentlemen, um, both here in Florida, Robert Carter and Clifford Dale. And I, I, they take these melodies and um, <laughs> sprinkle magic on them. Immediately, my eyebrow lifts in the air, and I said, oh, i got to write that one. Okay, here's it. <laughs> I love writing. And um, to bring all of this together, the song was a, a little, very difficult to perform, as as was The Look of Love. Mm. You can hear a lot of jazz clips in both of those songs. Mm. And I'm not necessarily a jazz singer, but I have an ear. And so these notes are, go, are all over the place. Um, but I was very comfortable in, in recording them. Uh, I'm frustrated a few times because you think a no should go a certain way and a piano player will tell you, no, that's not right. Mm, yeah, yeah. I can relate to but that. But I, I, I said, okay, I see what you're saying and then go back to it. It was it was hilarious most of the time. We laughed through all, the, all of the recordings. Isn't that but, just um, wonderful, what do you feel? <laughs> what do you feel needed to stay in its R&B form as well? So I didn't want to take it too far. Mm. But everybody loves it, and, and you know, here in the states, everything has to be bumping. So we wanted you to um, feel that one in your butt. <laughs> well, that, that's just uh, yeah, definitely. And you got the sax kind of singing along with you. You know, the, the, yes. your vocal. You got the sax singing along with you, and it's got that bumpingy R and B feel just a just a lovely tune and um I'm, thank you for sharing that that's that's wonderful and now we know who the sex thank player you. is now so we can that's what's brilliant thank you very much uh, and yeah. his project should be out now so he's just please <laughs> he's amazing <laughs> I, I can't stop thinking about him at times but thank you for bringing that up no, thank you for, for answering it in such a lovely way um we um wish you were my man uh, it, is is that a real thing uh, that you wrote about? Is that is that um, it's got a <laughs> it's got a real feel about it? You know, it's um, uh, are you talking to someone there, Marcia? <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! You know, I said, is this song going to get me in a little bit of trouble, or which way is it going? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I I penned that one as well. I wrote that, and I wrote the uh, the. I compose it as well. Although I'm a musician, you do have to relay that information to people that are musicians. And um, just looking for that hardcore R&B club tune. And I, I don't know about you guys, but there, um, there are a lot of groups here that uh, are stepping groups. Mm. Uh, we have a lot of stepping music. And uh, at the same time, we have... Different audiences. Um, is this song going to appeal to a 17-year-old? I'm just all over the place, and uh, that's why you're getting these different responses. But but it um, will. I mean, because it's got the it's got that <laughs> wah sound uh, on the synth. I think it's on the synth, <laughs> and and then it's got that kind of funky rhythm guitar edge as well. So not only is it R and B and appealing in that sense, but also it's got <laughs> kind of a yeah. funky kind of almost. I don't want to use the word disco, but it's got an appeal yes. beyond, you know, the the yes. R and B feel, and and that's that's what kind of stuck out to me as as a as a more senior DJ, shall I say? That guitar was uh, played by uh, Michael Manley, formerly of the Commodores, wow. and he's also the engineer on this project, mm. along with co-producer. So <laughs> there you go. There you have it. It's like having Nile Rogers in your back door. 
it yeah. is. It's just like that. How yep. amazing! How amazing is that? That's fantastic. Um, <laughs> Gosh, I, I, I'm waiting, boys. <laughs> <laughs> in the meantime, in the meantime, you just continue to build up your catalog, and you you write, write, write. That's what you do. Mm, marvelous, marvelous. The next one was really what's coming up um, this year. What, what what have you got sort of in the pipeline for 2014? Um, and uh, I'll be going to see you in the UK. I knew you were going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were hoping you were going to go there too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm definitely on the way. Um, there is a 15-song uh, album that has to be completed, and mm. we're just, oh, my God, we're burning the candles. We're burning all of the ends, and uh, there's nothing left of the candle. <laughs> and... I cannot land on the ground without that album. Things have been received so well. We just, we had no clue. This is overwhelming. This is very overwhelming. And I'm getting a little emotional now talking about it. Wonderful. Um, it was, I, you ever been just caught off guard and you didn't know what to say? <laughs> Period. <laughs> In a good way or a bad way? No, I shouldn't go there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I hear you. You don't know if you should be grateful or turn around and run the other way. It was just like an airplane landing in the midst Wonderful. of your backyard. And so we're being forced to move very fast and very quickly. And I, I think I've been asked a thousand times, when are you coming? When are you coming? When are you if it's not you guys, it's a total stranger. Wow. And that will happen in 2014. Um, more more so a promotional tour will lead the way Fantastic. or a media tour lead the way. Uh, because this has to be done right. It, it, it's not fair. Um, to me, it's not fair to you to give you this quick thing. Um, she showed up with her track. Well, you know, when I have 10,000 musicians around me. Wonderful. Wow. <laughs> oh, it was this quick. We were at the so-and-so club. I, I, I just, I don't do that here, so I don't think I should do that there. That's, that's so lovely. That, yeah, that takes very extensive planning. It, it's very costly as well. Of course, yeah. But, but 2014 is the year. Sounds absolutely lovely. We'll be looking out for you. And, you know, the nice thing about the UK is it's not that big. That It doesn't matter where you go, we can find you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, you know, we're, we're, it's not even like driving across one state of America, is it, the UK? I mean, uh, it's, um, it's very easy to get from, you know, Scotland down to to London, you know, it's it's not that far, and um, and that's one of the advantages, and uh, that's that's great. The last thing I was going to say, uh, Marcia, was if we could um, point our listeners at your websites and social media and Twitter and and, and all that kind of thing, uh, and also where they can uh, pick up your EP and where they can buy it and uh, so on, um, you know, oh. I think that'd be wonderful because they're going to want to know. I love you guys so much, and I thank you, and we kept everything very simple for you. As far as the, uh, the social media is concerned, Marcia Mitchell, everyone knows my name, but a lot of people don't know me as the artist. So uh, now you're being introduced to Marcia Mitchell, the artist, uh, which is the uh, Facebook handle. Um, Instagram is Marcia Mitchell, the artist. The website is Marcia Mitchell, the com, and uh, Twitter, because the username can't be very long, is Marcia the Artist. Mm-hmm. And if you do go to that Facebook page, Marcia Mitchell, the Artist, there are links to um, the music uh, as far as one avenue is concerned, or two avenues, Reverb Nation and iTunes. However, that music can be found all over the internet. Um, I believe right about now there are probably 23 online music stores. So if you key in my name, you're going to run into it some way, somehow. But wow. definitely visit the media avenues. Wonderful. Thank you. That's that's really lovely, Marcia. And you know, a lot of people through convenience use things like iTunes and Amazon and so on. So uh, that they will find you, and that's brilliant. Um, 
Well, I, unless there's anything else you'd like to say to the listeners here in the UK, please feel free to do so right now. I am a dramatic person. So to keep it simple and say, I love you like there is no tomorrow. This is the most amazing thing that can happen to a person to be received and loved. You can't do anything wrong. <laughs> That's what I feel like. Mm-hmm. Uh, as far as the UK is concerned, I am forever indebted to the country. I love you. Oh. Marcia, that's absolutely lovely, and we love your music, so please keep sending it over. And if you come to the UK, let us know. And um, when your album's released, let us know so we can get behind it and um, and be part of that here in the UK. That would be an absolute honour. Wonderful. Sound Fusion, thank you for your support since day one. I've been tracking you. I said, my God, <laughs> this is unbelievable. Oh. So thank you. You're welcome, and thank you for your wonderful music. Well, you've got slightly more of your day left than we have because it's afternoon here, so you have an absolutely blessed and beautiful day, and hopefully we'll speak again in the not-too-distant future. All right, class. Thank you. Take care. Thank you now. Bye. Bye. Bye.